So the weapon we have selected to examine in first degree brown belt is the rope. The rope is a very functional weapon, easily interchangeable for a number of things in your environment. The official length somewhere between two feet and three feet, uh, a little bit of variable based on your height and the expansion of your arms. At either end of the rope, we tie a knot. And the reason we tie a knot is so that when you're expanding and doing techniques with flexion, your hands don't slide off, so that gives you better leverage. It's also used as a bit of a weight on the end that if we're projecting, you can hit with it, project out, block, and so on. We use it to attack extremities of the body like the legs and the arms, and especially in and around the throat area to control him with the official techniques. Now, in a dojo, another thing that you can use is your belt. So you take your belt off, you fold it, loop it, and you're good to go. Pretty good strength in your techniques that you can apply. Let's suppose you're outside in your everyday use. You're walking down the street and you happen to have your Kenjite sweatshirt. It's hot out, you've got it draped over your shoulders and you're being threatened so you pull it off, loop it a couple of times and there you go ready to go. You have another rope skill application. Other natural things that you might have on you or about you, the belt. Belt holding up your pants, always interchangeable for rope techniques. You're in a business suit and you have a tie. The tie also interchangeable. And just as a side note, if you are wearing a tie, the standard tie that people wear, it's pretty easy to get choked yourself, but if it's a clip-on, the person goes to choke you, it breaks away. Just something to think about. In the colder months, or maybe you're out in the hot and you need to shade, something like a scarf. You know, you're walking down the street, you have the scarf, you're being attacked, you take the scarf off, you're ready to defend yourself. Once again, also be aware that if you have a scarf around your neck, it can be used to choke you as well. Also in your environment, something like a towel. Take the towel, fold it, loop it, circle it, and now you're able to defend yourself. Not only can you defend in terms of blocking and looping, but you can project out and snap. And that snap action of the towel can also get somebody's attention, keep them busy while you escape. A lot of young people these days are carrying keys with a lanyard. So they carry it in their pocket. This could also be used not quite as strong, but you do have a weight on the end that you can use it to strike forward you're walking down the street and you have your pet, something like a dog leash. Dog leash also works incredibly well for rope techniques. Not only does it work well as rope techniques, but in terms of noosing or looping, if you run it through the handle, it's pretty simple to apply a choke in a different manner that way. Now, outside on the street, it could be something you're in your backyard, and you have access to your hose. Hose action can also be used, especially for wrapping. Very flexible idea. Around the house, something like an extension cord. You know, take the cord, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and now you have something that's got real strength for looping and trapping. You're in a gym, or you're working out. Something like a skipping rope. Same idea, take the ends, fold them in half. Once you fold them in half, you now have a section that's actually got weight on it. It's, it's almost like a Kasari idea for projecting and striking. Something that's a little bit nastier, if you're so inclined, is using a chain. Uh, not only in terms of blocking and striking extremities of the body, but if you expand this, picture this chain going full tilt down onto a target, crushing part of your cranium or striking to the ribs. This would hurt a great deal and we'll take a close look at some breaking with that. And another official weapon that has been around for assassins and was used in various countries as methods of execution, the garrote. 
Garat is basically uh, famous for the piano wire or a heavy wire. This is 100 pound uh, wire for framing, just with a couple key rings. This can do a lot of damage around the neck because it cuts into uh, the flesh area and closes off, maybe even severs arteries. So these are all easily interchangeable in your environment. So now we're going to look at the official rope techniques and drills of first degree brown belt. Okay, so your first official self-defense with the rope for an attack that's coming down, descending rope. Remember, you never start with your hands fully apart like this, always fairly close together, just like you're fighting so you can expand and get that snap. So Mr. Williamson is there. He comes to step through and club down. I'm going to step off angle and slip. And once again, as I block up, remember you want to block at or above the elbow. That's really important. Do not block to the wrist. The elbow will bend and you'll end up wearing his elbow. He, be he beats you up. He wins by your mistake. Okay, so the idea is to get at or above the elbow. Here it comes. You snap it at or above the elbow. Now to check his height a little bit, I'm going to snap down with this rope and push it on his hip. That'll lower his weight a little. Then I'm going to do a cheap knee buckle here and punch down towards the kidney. That'll check his height and lower him down so I can take the right end of the rope and wrap it around. I now apply a choke on him in this position as I slide behind. I knee him in the spine with my right leg, pull him back onto my left leg and set that choke for a while. Have a cup of tea, enjoy the time. Then as I step back, I pull him to the ground, let go with the right hand and put the rope in the left hand. I do a left downward looping roundhouse onto the chest and as I cover out, I strike down on the face. Now you're thinking, that's kind of a lame strike. Now if this is a chain, it'll hurt a lot. You hit down to the face, at the very least it keeps him busy. Do a drop step and then once again you hit to the face with the rope here. And then you would cover up. Okay, let's try the other side. From this position, slip it and lock. Check down to check the height, buckle and punch. Make sure you're punching down so he doesn't fly towards the back wall. If I do a horizontal punch, he'll go that way. So this punch is down. Wrap around and slide behind. And we're going to change this angle just a little bit for the camera. Drive your knee into the spine and then pull him onto your other knee. Set that choke, keep the pressure on. Let go with the right hand as you pull back. Left downward looping roundhouse on the throat or chest. Hit the face, drop step, hit the face again, and then cover up. Okay, up. Descending rope. If you're interested in learning more about what we do, please visit our website www.kenjiteinternational.com where you too can get involved with Kenjite's online learning program from anywhere in the world. Thanks for watching.